everyone. I'm just doing this next one about um, media, and the one after that will be about um, Mr. Murdoch's media empire. And um, you remember, I don't know, people might not, but um, 2000, 2001, the News of the World scandal where they had gotten private um, mobile phone numbers for their own advantage. So, um, yeah. The media think, remember, it's illegal to possess uh, stolen these stolen documents in regards to WikiLeaks. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. Okay? <laughs> Just, um, yeah. 2016, how the truth was destroyed. So you were by the... Pro uh, the government's propaganda by Claire, Claire Bunnish, January 1st, 2017, from the Free Thought website. I'll leave a link in the description. We are an empire, Karl Rove nefariously asserted in 2004, and when we act, we create our reality. And while you're studying that reality, judiciously, you, as you will, we'll act again, creating our new realities, and when which you can study too, and that's how things will sort out. We are history's actors, and you, all of you, We'll be just left to study what we do. Carl Rove might have had said that 12 years ago, but the words hauntingly describe our situation in 2016. Oxford Dictionary is initially named post-truth the international word of the year, with facts seemingly relative, truth debatable, and falsely premised war on fake news. Orwell must be rolling in his grave. In fact, given these telling circumstances, perhaps the Oxford Fic Dictionaries didn't go far enough. This year optimizes a year of post-coherence. Rovenies ilk, the dynasties, Bush and Clinton, regaining power for nearly 30 years, must chuckle behind closed doors as Americans quarrel savagely over the authenticity of falsehoods and facts alike. And that's the thing that, you know, they're all best friends behind closed doors, and they're they're all related as well. With ostensibly everything now up in the air, the US power apparatus has in arguably created a new reality, one in which doubt has been so installed to us to obstruct and thwart the dissemination and accurate of factual information. Now all this fact checking has come about, you know, and, and most of these fact checkers aren't even qualified or, or don't even know what they're talking about. This purposeful manipulation of perception, in other words, does exactly what Rose and adaptly termed history actors intended, to keep the rest of us confused and bitterly arguing over what's going on. Outline communication facilitated in this man most exponentially. It is doubtful that such disorientation would have occurred decades ago when social media didn't have critical influence. Of course, this time of that turbulence isn't the manufacture without reason. It allows serpentous and sometimes flagrant distribution of propaganda flavor to American political establishment to circulate largely unhindered. But those experts' post coherence unintentionally also gave rise to a furious backlash. The internet might facilitate confusion and propaganda, but it is, after all, a global library of information and wary independent alternate media outlets immediate tear apart false information published by collusion and corporate media pursuities. With all of this in mind, the following are just a smattering of many outrageous examples on how the fake news narrative brought us post truth, intentionally shaping the events of 2016 and promises to continue in the energy far into the future. Perhaps the most laughable fake news came to us courtesy of CNN's Chris Como, who warned the planet of ongoing publication, Milky Leaks, by uh, ongoing publication by Milky Leaks of documents deleterious to credibility of the democratic establishment too. Remember, it's illegal to possess these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. Kumo's conspicuous ploy to limit the spread of actual documents and win CNN additional reader and viewership constituted a reckless foray into censorship and information. Of course, CNN didn't proclaim the leaked emails further on for nothing. The outlet bears the snarky mon monkier Clinton News Networks as its parent company, Time Warner, donated over 400000 to Hillary Clinton's campaign and was exposed by Elton and Beta countless times for cutting off reporters who dared to criticize its daring candidate or report on revealing corruption. Further, CNN perused 
Renatio's claim as to the documents revealed the outlet and other colluding with the clinton campaign to report news portraying the democrats in a fable manner of course those who took humo's warning to heart and relied solely on the clinton news network would never know that pretentious detail other mainstream media news outlets who coordinated with clinton camp struggled to accurately report the contents of the wikileaks documents when they bothered covering in the re uh, revelations corporate propaganda spin machines seemed to be in on overdrive for the duration of the election cycle and has reached the level of absurdity following DT's win. Because according to corporate media, who ignored the depth of corruption exposed by WikiLeaks, the election of Trump was so anomalous, there had to be an explanation beyond the fact that the American people didn't find Hillary qualified for the job. <laughs> War is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Uh. And to the Russians. There's always someone, isn't there, to blame? I mean, for America, it's the Russians, and for Australia, it's China, and it's all just a load of shit because they all work together behind closed doors. They're all best friends. Taking cues from the era of McCarthyism and leading a new Red Scare with a bullhorn and a once illusionist Washington Post who first positioned, who first posted Without any evidence, scanned statements from unnamed CIA officials that intelligent community had reached a consensus the Russian hackers had interfered with the election to install Trump. The, famously in lockstep, the New York Times quickly parroted the same assertion as if to were to see the tr steal the truth. Neither outlet, however, bothered consulting officials from 16 other agencies compromising the U.S. intelligence community. In actuality, no such consensus had been reached, not even inside the CIA. Shortly after Paul's, after the Post's shameful scare piece was published, the FBI came forward to denounce Russian hacking theory as fuzzy and ambiguous, showing a lack of cohesion amongst intelligent officials as well as a rush to shrink blame for the lost election. WikiLeaks itself, the one organization with inside information, has ferociously and repeatedly denied their source hacking anything. It's not Russian that the documents were leaked by an insider. Nonetheless, the news of the report went viral and further current administration's agenda to both paint Russia as a villain and Trump as something else stolen at the election. Indeed, the utterly unproven Russian hackers theory pr provided the impetus for Ru President Obama on an embarrassing diplomatic meltdown this week, announcing the expulsion of 35 Russian diplomat sanctions and shuttering two components owned by Russia. While the move could have been easily bought, the two superpower nations yet closer to a military conflict, Russian President Vladimir Putin allowed cooler heads to prevail, went against the fury of other officials, and had announced there would be no, no diplomatic tit for tat, no United States diplomats would be expelled from Russia. Incidentally, the mainstream press jumped the gun again, publishing statements Russian officials claiming the country would be moved mirroring moves by US before Putin announced Russia would not be stopping to such diplomatic pettiness. And we're having that happening again, aren't we, with China leaving their embassies out of the U.S. just before the election. And it's hit for tat U.S. left China. So it's, it's going on again. While these points show unseemly power of misinformation to make corporate media a soft target for ridicule, it's imperative to understand how these false and misleading news items amount to government propaganda. And more of the public buys the preferred narrative. It's easier to will be shoved unsavory actions, including war, down our throats, slaving some 200 independent out alternative outlets as Russian propagandists and fake news was another feat the Post underhandedly managed in 2016. And, excuse me. And thanks to its efforts, um, Obama officially wrote into law and assistance the Ministry of Propaganda to punitively combat front state disinformation. Of course, considering the Post's own Amazon CEO, Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos, had received 600 million CIA funds, and that ostensibly for a standalone project, this hardly excuse me, comes as a shock. With the truth and balance, 2016 seemed to be a year plucked straight out of the pages of George Orwell's 1984, perhaps lightly edited by a Lucius Huxley. 
We don't need censorship from Facebook's neobiblical fake news flares or the US Ministry of Truth, but in this newer post-coherence, the masses fell for the trick and now believe themselves incapable of discerning fact from fiction, despite the still accessible, voluminous information available on the internet. And that's the thing, people are just too lazy to even search up something. They just either don't have the time or they don't have the, the cognitive intelligence to think that Mm, something's not right there. That, you know, I heard something in the past. You know, they go with the herd because they don't want to be left out. If the Serum Baron... If the, uh, I can't probably say this, some Bernard masses were coherent enough to see through the ploy, freedom of speech and the press wouldn't currently hang in the balance. I'm sorry for saying that word wrong. An idiot needed needs to be spoon-fed information could quash the institutions up at the heart of the supposedly free society. However, until the government acts more drastically, we still have independent media whose integrity has a phenomenal track record of refusing to publish bogus information or retracing, retracting any items later found to be mistaken. In the very near future, without, without hawk-like vigilance, dissenting opinion written reports accurately depicting uh, corruption and endemic in government may become purely a thing of the past. So, just a short, quick one. Um, I just, yeah, this, I mean, I, I will share this one about the media. But, um, you know, like, for them to turn around and, and say that, um, you know, it's, it's the media's job to tell you what to think, it's not very good. So wherever you are in the world, Thanks for watching. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Much love. Raise those vibrations. Thanks for watching. Bye.